reckless, arrogant, presumptuous, bold, brazen, daring are all acceptable synonyms for translating the Greek word tolmetes. Tolma, the base word here, was the characteristic quality of the Athenians during their heyday, according to Thucydides. Characteristically, the Athenians were risk-takers who gambled on victory no matter the odds, a quality which often demoralized their opponents, but which, in the end, proved their ruin when they lost the greatest gamble of all, the invasion of Sicily. Taking on God himself is the most reckless thing any person could ever do. Pretending that in doing so one was actually helping him is even more breathtakingly arrogant, that is, doing Gnostic combat purportedly on his behalf. And setting oneself to slaughter his sheep for one's own benefit as the true purpose of all this deception makes the English word reckless seem almost insufficient. Self-willed. The Greek adjective orthades and other parts of speech from the same root refer to stubbornness, arrogance and surliness. Etymologically, the word group has to do with putting one's own desires first. Titus chapter 1 verse 7 tells us that this is a characteristic which no godly pastor teacher should ever exhibit. While true teachers need to be resolute and unflinching in defense of the truth, stubbornness for its own sake is no virtue, and arrogantly assuming one's own correctness and or demanding compliance in all matters based on one's position is a model to be avoided at all costs even though it is easily recognized today in all too many pastors and groups. Applied to these particular individuals and false teachers in general, self-willed also has to do with putting their own interests in front of those of the congregation whom they are supposed to be serving, exactly the opposite of what the Bible commands and commends of true teachers of the Bible. Angelic powers. In the very last part of the previous paragraph, part of the same verse in our modern verse structure, the false teachers in question were described as those who in their lust pursue the polluting of the flesh and so despise God's divine authority. The word divine authority, Greek kyriots derived from kyrios, the word for Lord, and thus literally meaning lordship, ties in directly with the word powers, literally glories, doxi, as a reference to angels. Jude had likewise combined the two terms in his parallel passage, in the same way these false teachers, deluding themselves with false visions, defile their flesh, reject all authority, kyriots, and bring slander against angels, literally, glories, doxi, that is, in Gnostic combat with aeons. Jude chapter 1 verse 8 The word authority can be used of angels as well, Colossians chapter 1 verse 16, and Ephesians chapter 1 verse 21, since in terms of the elect angels, their authority is directly derived from God's authority. The glories in both passages are angels, given that name by both Jude and Peter, and directly connected to God's authority by being paired with the word Kyriotes, to make clear the completely unauthorized nature of attempting any sort of combat with them. Who are we, who is anyone, to dispute God's authority or anyone given it or to despise his glory or anyone manifesting it? Whether elect or fallen, Angels are not to be underestimated, and certainly not to be slandered, disparaged, or blasphemed by mere human beings, as they are of much greater strength and power. That is drinking down arrogance and ignorance in a toxic cocktail, sure to result in no good. And the proof of that truth is in the fact that even elect angels do not deign to attempt what these false teachers are prescribing and ostensibly doing, that is, Michael, in his unwillingness to disparage the devil when involved in combat, with him being the prime example named in Jude chapter 1 verse 9 and understood here as well. If even other angels, beings of much greater strength and power, than we refrain from such activity, it is the height of temerity to assume that anything but disaster could result from attempting to take part in this Gnostic combat, however engaged in, and that remains true of any such activity today, no matter how popular, such as exorcisms, commanding or binding spirits, or any sort of putative engagement with demons or angels of any sort. While all this may seem beyond obvious to us, we should not underestimate the fascination that many people have with angels and all things angelic. When that curiosity is piqued through the prospect of communing with heavenly beings, and in ways that correspond to hidden desires at that, 
it is not entirely beyond understanding why these charismatic false teachers were able to gain a hearing with many and a foothold with some. And that is true even in cases where the appeal was not to licentiousness, but to asceticism and abstemiousness, as an equally effective way to engage in such combat. For on the one hand there are many individuals who are more inclined to the excess of self-deprecation instead of to overindulgence, and on the other hand to the worship of angels, another aspect of Gnostic teaching, as opposed to doing battle with them, Revelation chapter 19, verse 10 and 22, 8 and 9. So don't let anyone judge you in regard to food or drink, or in the category of festival observances, be it of new moons or Sabbaths. All these things are shadows of what was to come, but the reality has to do with Christ. Let no one gain control over your life, desiring to enslave you to himself through a show of false humility and the adoration of angels, basing his approach on what he has allegedly seen while puffed up by his own fleshly thoughts, yet not embracing the head Christ. For it is from this source that the entire body of the church is truly supplied and instructed through all its joints and sinews, and thus produces the growth that God has given. If you have died with Christ to these false pagan principles belonging to this world, why are you letting yourselves be wrongly indoctrinated as if your life were of this world? In accordance with the commandments and teaching of mere men, these false teachers tell you don't handle, don't taste, don't touch, even though we know that all these are only things which decay with use. Such teachings have a false reputation for wisdom, but only in concocted religion, false humility, and legalistic harsh treatment of the body. They have no actual power to neutralize the sinful flesh, that is, the sin nature is not to be controlled by these legalistic approaches. Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 through 23. 